Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is a very special set of interviews that we've been doing uh, today. And it's we've got a lot of really great guests. Yeah. I'm looking forward to sharing it with you guys. So uh, are you ready to start the show? I'm ready. Okay, can uh, Aaron, Joe, can you get the useless uh, Fin Factor stuff off of the set? Yeah, okay. okay. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> We have a very, very special interview episode here with GM of the San Jose Sharks, Doug Wilson. Thank you so much yes. for coming on the Thank show you. with Thank us. You guys. We absolutely appreciate it. We're, we're really big fans. I know I talked to you a little bit earlier. We're, we're huge fans of your work and, and everything that you do. And having a, a product on the ice that's on, on, always uh, competitive is, is something that's, you know, it's hard to, to find in the NHL and you've managed to do that for a, a number of years. Well. So. We're trying, we still work ahead of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. So, um, you know, the, one of the things I wanted to ask was, the game has gotten a lot younger, a lot faster. Uh, but when we look at guys like Joe Pavelski, Joe Thornton, and the work that they're doing specifically this season, Joe Thornton's up for the, the Masterson Award, right? And what is it that you can say about these guys? What does it say about how, how well they think the game and how important they are to this team, despite you know, being on the, the end, of that, uh, end of the career? Well, I think you nailed it. I okay. mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can uh, play with speed, mm -hmm. and a lot of it is between the ears. You, you think the game, you think where the puck is going, and when you take a look at a, a Pavs or Jumbo, I mean, they think the game at an elite level. And uh, I think every good team has a blend. You know, you have, uh, you have speed, you have size, you have uh, offensive guys, guys that can uh, shut things down. Mm -hmm. But when you have a culture led by guys like that that truly love the game and think the game and, and uh, can't wait to get the ring in the morning, um, you have a, a culture, an example of um, that we reap the benefits all the way through our lineup. And it's uh, even the young guys in the Barracuda that come yeah. up to get to be around these guys, they cherish that time with those guys. And I want to actually, right off of that, that same vein, there's a lot of the young players like uh, Blickfeld, right, uh, and Gregor, they're having amazing seasons in the queue right now. Um, you know, a lot of the younger guys you're talking about with the Barracuda and whatnot, and guys are still in the juniors, uh, Shakovic, uh, Shemlevsky. Mm -hmm. These guys are having amazing seasons right now. Now, you've traded a lot of the higher round draft picks, first, seconds, but looking at what we have in these players, obviously there's a lot of confidence for you to be able to trade away those high picks for, for win now players and being able to have stuff still in the cupboards, if you will. Well, what you always look at is uh, trying to give your group the best chance to win and keeping an eye on the future. And uh, it all starts with ownership. We've got an owner that's committed to uh, making sure we give our guys the best chance to win. But a lot of the first round picks that we've moved have always been later picks. Our average first round pick is 27th, right. 28th. Yeah. Completely different than a lottery pick. We've been able to turn them into players, whether it be a Brent Burns or Martin Jones right. or Vander Kane or Danny Boyle. So. Um, how you use them um, and teams that want to stay at the top and compete, that's how you utilize them. Having a, a scouting staff that finds a lot of these players in later rounds or making this be a place that uh, free agents want to come and play, European yep. free agents, college free agents. Um, and the Barracuda is a huge piece of our puzzle. Uh, one of the youngest teams in the league doing extremely well. Yeah. And you'll see a bunch of those guys on our team within the next <laughs> year or two. Can't wait. So talking about trades, could you kind of get a behind the scenes look of how a trade kind of develops? Is there some sort of like secret bat phone that all the GMs have to talk to each other, the big text email chain going on? Is there actually a trading block where you can put someone out there like kind of feelers or something? Well, to me, it's, uh, you know, the relationships you have with other GMs. Like uh, any conversation I have with a fellow GM is kept in confidence. Um, a lot of them I've known for a lot of years. Three of them were my defense partners, Dale Talon, Bob Murray, and Mark ah. Bergevin. So guys that I've known for a long time. When you're trying to do a deal, you want it to work for both sides. We might be a today team trying to win. They might be looking for some assets going forward. So it's actually a kind of a matchmaking process. You want to learn where they're at. You learn from listening to what their needs might be and then see if there's a match. And then it comes down to you know, when difference makers come av available, it's supply and demand. Are you willing to pay the cost and does it fit for both now and the future? Um, and we've dabbled in all those things and it's, uh, you know, my job is to give our group the best chance to win every year, um, but also know that uh, the future comes quickly sometimes too. You've got a really good question about uh, the drafting team and uh, who's now heading up the, the drafting group. Right, yeah. so uh, mind if we talk about your son a little bit. Uh, he is a hashtag Go Bells. Uh, <laughs> we're all Bellarmine alumni oh, here, yeah. so he's one of us as well. So uh, could you talk about how, how is it working with your son? Is it great seeing him around? Is it 
is it awkward sometimes? Is it fun? Is it? I mean, I'm sure it's great to see your son do very well, and he is doing very well for himself. Well, obviously, he takes after his mother, first of all, <laughs> so he's, he's, he's smart enough there. But he, uh, I don't get to see him that much because he's on the road. Okay. And the role that he's taken on is uh, uh, a very important role in this organization. He's been mentored by Timmy Burke, uh, who's one of the best in the business, and Joe Will. Um, so he, he went out, and he's, he's, worked, he's worked hard. He worked for the Dodgers. He started there. Uh, he's worked with us. He's... He's an academic, obviously, yeah, uh, Bellarmine yeah. and then Santa Clara, and he's a, a very bright, bright kid. Uh, but he's got a great work ethic mentored by people uh, within our organization that he's gone and earned it. Um, everything that we do is collective. You know, we have a lot of uh, people that don't really seek attention, will just go out and do their work. And as a GM, I learned a long time ago, wise man uses all his resources. I hire people much smarter than me, <laughs> listen to them, and then we try and make decisions that uh, are best for this organization. That's good. Very good. So uh, I have a question about uh, some comments Drew Doughty had made recently about Brent Burns. I don't need to go into that because I'm sure everybody already knows that comment, but uh, it kind of brought something back for, for Aaron and I, what we had been talking about. Maybe it's time that the Norris stood for the best defensive defenseman and maybe the, the Orr trophy for the best offensive defenseman. Does, do you think it's maybe time to recognize both sides of that? There's a lot of forward trophies and it seems like only one defenseman it's trophy. good to ask a, for, uh, defense, a, a former defenseman. Right. Defensemen are always <laughs> left out. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I would be okay with that, but I think every year the Norris takes into consideration the balance of players. I mean, okay. Rod Langway won Norris trophies for being a defensive player. Uh, when you have a uh, great offensive year, sometimes um, that might make the difference, but it doesn't mean you don't have a balance in your game. Brent Burns plays in all situations. Penalty kills, 6'5", he's 230, has a physical presence. Um, you know, every year you, you take into consideration who has had an outstanding year in his category. Mark Edward Blasick, to me, should have been up for the award several times, right. too. And uh, So I leave that up to the voters, and uh, you know, people can have their opinions, but I know this, uh, uh, when you have three potential candidates on our team, yeah. Brent Burns, Eric Carlson, and Mark Edward Blasek, we're pretty fortunate. Yes, it's pretty crazy. And well done, well done getting that accomplished, by the way. We, we do appreciate that. So. <laughs> you have another uh, question? Or? Yeah, so there, there's kind of a, a talk for, I think, this summer. You guys, GMs, are getting together about rule changes. Is there anything that you would want to see change that would, maybe not something that's brought up, but something that you think the NHL would need to change to make it better? You know, the, the game, I think, is in a really good place. You, know, you talked about there's a lot of younger players and maybe smaller players that are having an impact now. Yeah. Uh, several years ago, when there was a, a dark year, uh, <laughs> we all sat, and those of us on the competition committee, and instead of looking at what's best for us, we looked at what was best for the game. Good. And I think there's a really good balance in the game. I think there's, uh, there's a lot of speed to the game. I think you're, you're seeing uh, um, you know, games where they're not decided early in a game and then they just shut it down. Uh, some of the rules taking away the hooking and obstruction has uh, allowed people to flourish, both offensively and defensively. Defensively, you can't just clutch and grab. You've got to do it through skating, positioning, and, and thinking the game at a high level. Um, you have to be very careful when you change rules. The ramifications of that rule has to be thought through. I'm not a big believer in the trapezoid. I don't think there's a reason <laughs> for it anymore. Me too. Because if you're dumb enough to dump the puck in where their goalie can get it and make a play, that's on you. And uh, so that's, you know, that's just one personal thing. Um, we're always looking at ways to um, have the game be entertaining, um, you know, reward excellence. You know, I, I believe in rewarding excellence and not catering to mediocrity and make people get better. Um, so that's the lens I, I take any rule changes through. Nice, great. Do you, can, can we talk story time or do you have one other question to ask? Uh, no, we can go right Okay, I, I think, so what we've done is with all of our guests, we've asked, well, we used to have story time. We, our well has run dry, right? We don't have any more <laughs> uh -oh. stories to tell. But we were talking about interactions that we've had with Sharks players, you know, over maybe we met them at La Villa or something, right? So right. things like that. Um, we just had Doug Murray on here. He was talking about a time where he was trying to measure his head, who has the biggest head between him and Scott Hannon, some other folks. They actually <laughs> dunked their heads in water to do the displacement theory. It was awesome. I want to see how big so. the buckets were to uh, yeah. see fit over those two heads. <laughs> yes, a pretty big the, bucket. Rule of thumb, don't sit behind him in a movie. Yes. It's, like an, it's like an eclipse. <laughs> so do you have any uh, stories maybe that you could share, family-friendly ones, obviously? Uh, <laughs> uh, that limits it right there. Okay. <laughs> I, I, our group is just, uh, our group is a lot of fun. That's all I can say. And you okay. can just imagine with Jumbo uh, and Bernsey together. I mean, I think the picture of them walking down the street in, in Pittsburgh shirtless with yes. their beards, I had a call from our owner and said, is, are those our players? And I says, yes, they are. And he says, 
thought so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's them just being themselves. Yeah. And what I do love about our guys is they're real. It's not, yeah. you know, putting on a show. They, uh, they love the game. They love life. And uh, it's okay to laugh. Great. I love that. And what a way to end it, really, right there. So, hey, that was an interview with Doug Wilson, GM of the San Jose Sharks. Doug, again, thank you so much for taking the time. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. We are here with Douglas Murray, former uh, Sharks defenseman, former mean Sharks defenseman. (laughs) You were slamming people out there. I loved watching you play, man. It was such a a, a treat. It really, really was. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. Absolutely. So, uh, you want to go ahead and jump in? Sure. Uh, All right. I'm just going to do some little highlights here. You were picked in the eighth round, 241st overall. We kind of did this does, with Mark Smith. That does not exist anymore, by the way. Right, the eighth yeah. round? Yeah. Uh, this was back in 1999. And I looked this up. You were you played the 23rd most games out of your draft class, which is amazing considering how late My round doesn't exist anymore. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That I, was a good investment for the Sharks. Oh, yeah. Great, because right? Eighth round. Yeah played seven and a half years and then they get two second round picks for me <laughs> when they ship me out of town. That's pretty good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that was one of my questions, I guess I'll lead into it now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> is, it, is it awkward seeing Doug Wilson around at all in the offices or anything? Oh, I give him a kidney shot each time I see him. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, it's, it, it's, not, it's not awkward at all. Uh, I don't think Doug could have handled uh, when I get traded uh, with more class than he did and we had a great conversation in the morning before everything happened and uh, you know, it's uh, it's part of the business, and uh, if uh, our team wasn't playing as bad as we did at the time, <laughs> I would have never been traded, probably. Right. So, uh, or most definitely. So, you know, it's uh, I get. I would have loved to be in a shark for life, mm-hmm. but on the same time, uh, even though uh, the next part of my career didn't go as well, I learned a lot and. I think uh, you get a greater understanding of the game and how everything works, seeing other places too. So, you know, I'm somebody that lived with no regrets and I have no regrets for that. And I get a great relationship with Doug Wilson today. So it's awesome. Yep. Now how you were in Montreal towards at the very end, right? Yeah. How some people don't really understand this. Can you explain kind of the media difference between when you were in San Jose and when you were in Montreal? Yeah, so uh, you can pretty much, a uh, practice was like probably the media scrum during uh, the Stanley Cup playoffs here. Yeah. Uh, it, it is a constant and at the time they had like 24 hours following the team too. It was almost wow. like their own TV channel and uh, yeah, it was, it's, it's night and day. Um, I think it's a positive thing the way you have it here in yeah. a sense. and. Obviously, it's good with attention too, but uh, balance could be good. Yeah, very nice. So, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the Alumni Association, and you're you're the head of it, right? Yep. So, tell us a little bit about what the Alumni Association does, and and what you do to uh, to help facilitate that. So, we founded it uh, a bunch of us here uh, a little bit over a year ago, and uh, you know, like any. Uh, time you start a company a business or a charity it's uh, it's a lot of work and uh, we're uh, going through some growing pains but we've had uh, some early success of uh, giving out a lot of money I'd say our uh, main focus is um, our grants program where we give out uh, and for us we don't only give to hockey uh, for us being athletes and all the things that gives you by being an athlete, uh, we really appreciate from our youth, uh, especially hockey, and uh, we think every kid should have a chance to experience that. And uh, so we give out uh, participation costs and uh, equipment costs, grants for uh, kids uh, who are underserved, uh, that wants to play sport, can't afford it, or the family can't afford it. So. I say that our, that's our main focus, but we, we don't stop there. We have uh, donated to a lot of different causes. Uh, our first event we ever did, we came right out of the gate. I think we started planning it before we even have our paperwork uh, finished. It <laughs> uh, was uh, uh, the Bay Area Fire Relief up in Santa Rosa. Oh, wow. uh, and uh, it was, uh, that was great. We played the first responders up there, and we did all the fundraising away from there, so it was... Uh, 
uh, very minimal because uh, to be at the game, they let them pick. It was more for the community to uplift the community and still raise some money. So we give out to four different charities up there. And we've done some great work with uh, Bossy uh, in um, sports. Uh, we all know about uh, unequal pay between men and women, and uh, sometimes the guys get a little bit more attention than uh, the girls. So Bay Area Women's Sports Initiative is a great organization here locally that we work with. and. Um, all of this uh, we can't do with the ones that support us and the great sponsors. Uh, Kaiser is somebody who stepped up a couple of times for us. Nice. And, um, it's just unbelievable the work they do with the community. And we have uh, big plans going forward. Uh, I think we came out sprinting and uh, we are now trying to really set up a solid blueprint going forward. It's a lot of work. and. Uh, but it's uh, very, very rewarding, and um, I think it's great. It's great getting the guys out in the business community as well. Nice. So has it been pretty well receptive with the alumni of the Sharks to get them involved in this? Oh, absolutely. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of hockey guys are maybe not the best with email and uh, <laughs> anything like that. But the one thing you got to give uh, every single guy is when they show up at events, they're they're unbelievable. Uh, they're, they're so approachable, they're so engaged, mm -hmm. and I think uh, to a sense, which is understandably, because we were the same way when we played, it's a long season, it's a constant thing with interaction, interaction, interaction. I think once you're alumni and you get a little distance for it and even a greater appreciation of the game than when you're playing it, uh, I think uh, you can even get more engaged in these situations and you want to give back. And, the guys are, the guys are awesome. Most of there. Nice. Really, very cool. Yeah. Uh, we asked this question to everyone. <laughs> Why did you come back to San Jose? So, uh, yeah, I mean, was it 2014? There was 30 GMs that had no clue what they were doing, <laughs> so I didn't get a new contract. Uh, yeah, but so I was back in Sweden. I was kind of waiting to get a contract, and then 2015. Still for it, I know, 15. Mm -hmm. I went to Germany for uh, a couple of months trying to reignite the career, and um, I actually got a tryout with Calgary. And they actually wanted, to, I haven't talked much about this, but they wanted to sign me, but they were going to lose because I came after the trade deadline. Uh, I was, I was going to lose uh, an emergency call up during the playoffs. I couldn't play in the playoffs, uh, which I think is a weird, it was a weird rule. Yeah. Because um, I was a free agent. And uh, then uh, I was going to come to their camp and they traded for Dougie Hamilton in the summer. I never even got an exhibition game, but it was career over. I always wanted to ba move back to Sweden. I came over here in 97, did two years of high school, four years of college, and 11 years pro. And uh, so I moved back to Sweden and uh, whoever thinks early retirement i tell you this, anybody that strives for early retirement, don't. <laughs> it's, uh, it's honestly, it's a curse, it's okay. not a blessing. Yeah. Uh, one thing if you want to strive to not having to work maybe 12 hours a day or you can be a little bit more flexible taking vacations, that's fine. But uh, transition is a real problem in sports, uh, something I'm quite passionate about. I, uh, I get the honor to join the NHL Alumni Association board too. And, it's something uh, I see with the Sharks Alumni Foundation too, uh, doing the foundation work and um, putting on events, working with the local businesses is going to create opportunities for alumni to get it, uh, to be able to activate themselves afterwards. And uh, so I was back in Sweden and doing nothing and you can only party that much and <laughs> celebrate your career. <laughs> At some point, you <laughs> almost start losing yourself a little bit, and okay. I've always been very intrigued of business, so i say about, I was retired for about a year and a half or two, but I necessarily didn't do much for anything at all. Okay. I came back and visited here, and it actually hits me every time I came back after I was traded away, how much I love it here. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, this is the best place in the world to work. You don't have to be in tech. Uh, in Sweden, we got a little bit of that um, I don't know, secret jealousy a little bit, you know, you get the bragging of New York. I think here in general, people like to see other people succeed and people mm -hmm. are great uh, lifting up other people. So 
the work atmosphere, it doesn't matter. I mean, I don't do anything in tech today. I deal with some tech people, but mm -hmm. uh, Silicon Valley is not only tech. We obviously have sports, yeah. construction, and everything else you can <laughs> uh, work in. And uh, it's a great place to live and great people. Nice. The, the people, I think, is really the ones that make this area so special. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you on that one. So uh, I do have a question about uh, the current slump, if you'll indulge me a little bit. As a former player and someone who's got an eye for the game, uh, there's been a lot of talk about maybe the goaltending not being up to snuff, but a lot of other talk about maybe the defensive game is kind of lacking. As a former defenseman and someone who's got an eye for this, what do you see is going on uh, with, with the current slump that the Sharks are seeing? Well, first of all, uh, you know, I consult with the Sharks uh, on the business development and uh, I haven't really been a co-worker lately. I've been a psychologist for everybody. <laughs> so, uh, but it's a new season once the playoff starts. Agreed. And the one thing people can't forget, we have earned the right to have a bad stretch. We've earned the right to rest guys a little bit more that are a little bit banged up. With that being said, nobody wants to lose seven in a row and it's <laughs> nothing anybody in that room takes pride in. Right. But, uh, I mean, we walked into the playoffs, I think 20-0-2, the year we traded for Soupy Campbell and we lost in the second round. We won the President's Trophy convincingly and we lost in the first round. Mm -hmm. So, to me, I'm not stressing yet, and uh, the good, but the good thing about going through this stuff is usually when you go through tough slumps like this, you try to simplify and you try to focus on the details, and winning in the playoffs comes down to details. It's uh, who is more detail-oriented playing their game, so uh, sometimes you go on hot stretches and you maybe not deserve to win 10 in a row okay. because you get away with it, everything is going your way. So. Having a little adversity right now, I don't, it's, it's not going to kill us. And uh, it's a new season once, uh, but uh, tonight we're going to make sure we uh, secure that home ice <laughs> in the first it. round. Uh, we have a lot of Swedish fans, believe it or not, on yeah. our show. We have a lot of people from Sweden. Could you say Excellent. a little something to them in Swedish? Nu måste vi lära de här två grabbarna här att prata svenska. You gotta teach you guys some Swedish. Okay, right? uh, maybe you I can mean, just uh, translate it because uh, I can't say that. Yeah. <laughs> right, let him finish. Även uppskattar att ni följer Fin Factor och San Jose Sharks. Nu har de i alla fall fattat grejen att man behöver mer svenskar för att vinna. Jag var ju stort sett själv hela tiden när jag var här. Så det är dags för en svensk Stanley Cup tillsammans med San Jose Sharks. Perfect, thanks. I, I heard a lot of words in there that I liked, like Stanley Cup and Sharks, so I thank you, I, 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 thank you, I think. In there. I, yeah, I heard Finn Factor, factor too, in there. so I, yeah, I thank you, I'm, I'm, I think, I'm pretty sure, yeah. <laughs> no, I was, I was just talking that Sharks have finally figured out you yeah. need more Swedes to yeah. win. Ah. That's true. So it's time for a Swedish Stanley Cup with the, together with the Sharks. <laughs> nice, I love it. Perfectly said. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> uh, do you, one last thing that we'll finish on, do you have a, a funny story to tell from maybe from your playing days or not playing days, but. Oof, you got kids listening, right? Yeah, yeah so yeah, well, I, wanna, yeah. I wanna preface this real quick because we did ask Doug earlier <laughs> if he had any family friendly uh, stories and he kind of felt like he might not be able to do this part, but he, he thought of one. I, I think, said the right? Howard Stern show, I would have done great. Yes, on. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I think I got one. Um, I don't know, is it a wide angle? Uh, yeah, 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 okay. It's, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I might have a, quite a large head. <laughs> and uh, and uh, what happens is you have a lot of uh, time to kill when you're an athlete and uh, you come up with stupid stuff and uh, sometimes you have a head off. And uh, I, I honestly, I only lost one head off in my career, which was to uh, McIntyre, the old six foot eight fighter in Pittsburgh. He was in the minors though, but. Okay. Yeah, uh, so I lost it by like an eighth of an inch, and I couldn't believe it was that close because his melon looked huge. So <laughs> I know what you guys are looking at, but when I first got up to the Sharks, I got called head, and uh. Hannon was called head at times, yeah. and they had to figure out like who has the biggest head, and <laughs> so we did the classic of measuring around, and I crushed him, and they're like, "No, this can't be right." You know, Hannon has a little bit more of a long face, right? Okay. So. We had to go with the displacement theory. So uh, <laughs> in the training room, we filled the water with a bucket of water, a bucket with water, and uh, you know we pushed our heads down and saw who displaced the most water. And 
sadly I won that one too. Or, <laughs> No, it's funny. Oh my God. It's funny that that was Hannon because last week Mark Smith had a, had some good Hannon chirps. Uh, yeah, he was his roommate. Well, Hannon chirped us enough when we played, yeah. so we got to give it back. So yeah. yeah. Right? Well, if we ever have Hannon on the show here, he'll he'll be able to fire back at yeah. you guys. But for now, you're you're two and zero against him right now. So yeah. oh, excellent. You and Smitty, well done. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, are you any, anything else uh, while he's still here? Are we good? Oh, good. Okay. Well, uh, that was the interview with Doug Murray. Hey, thanks again so much. Anytime, guys. For joining us, we really thanks do appreciate for it. Yeah. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. And this is a very special interview with VP of Marketing and Digital, Doug Bentz. Thank you so much for being on the show, Doug. Thank you for having me. Appreciate, I appreciate it. So uh, I guess we wanted to start off because obviously we're getting into playoffs now and there's a lot of good things going on. And uh, I think maybe you had a, a question you wanted to start off with. Well, yeah, let's, uh, every playoffs, they kind of have a theme, right? Yep. So what would be this year's theme for the playoffs? So this year's theme, uh, you know, somewhat related to last year with some continuity with the playoff mode on, we actually saw a lot of great energy, not only in the building with playoff mode, but actually in the community. For the first round, we saw actually higher TV ratings, we saw stronger ticket sales, we saw more community activation. I think that idea of playoff mode really resonated with fans. So we're bringing back there you go. playoff mode. That's really and if cool. you recall from last year, we actually created a limited number of neons for playoff modes that actually went out to Sharks bars. Mm -hmm. right. That was, so, that was so popular with fans, we are building the whole campaign around that neon theme, which is actually kind of retro cool now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but not only is it just the playoff mode sign, we're extending that now to really everything we do, including our players and their personality. So yeah, so the 2019 playoffs presented by Kaiser Permanente will be playoff mode. And we saw a little bit of hint of that, I think this last week people got their playoff boxes, I guess, for the season ticket holders, and they had the pucks in there with all the neon on there. Correct, yeah, so our turn up and teal events, which we're doing a minimum of two per day, starting actually last week through the playoffs, where our street team goes out to the community, meets people, and actually gives them their playoff preparedness kit, which I can <laughs> show you here. I'll just Super key grip Joe is here helping us out, by the yeah. way. He's handing them in, so thanks, Joe. Um, so the playoff mode kit is available at turn up and teal locations, which is obviously um, announced via our social media accounts right. on a daily basis. If you open this up, it's, it's really meant to be uh, a kit for all Sharks fans, whether you're coming to games, or you're not at games, no matter where you live, how you can get in playoff mode. Nice. So we have a teal light bulb. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So you can show off, you can show everyone you're on playoff mode by putting that on your front porch yeah. and showing off your teal. That's awesome. The first thing I noticed though is that it's, it's teal wrapping paper that's in the inside. That's, Absolutely. The tissue paper is great. We, we bleed teal throughout, <laughs> even with the tissue paper. You got it. Uh, we have this All in right. there. We have a playoff mode rally towel. Oh, that's so great. again, whether you're at the game, whether you're at a bar, whether you're at home, you can get up there with the rally towel Love and feel it. like you're part of the game. Yeah. This is a uh, light up your phone in teal. Oh. So it's a little teal uh, sticker that goes over oh, your flashlight. Cool. Yeah. So oh. you can show off your teal. That's nice. smart. Uh, and then a large, uh, large format decal. So oh. for your car, for your oh, home, for okay. work, yeah. for your garage. So peel that guy off and stick it on. That's exactly. Good. Cool. Yeah. Exactly. That is really cool. That's, uh, <laughs> Sweet. So yeah, so, uh, so fans who show up at Turn Up and Teal events will get a kit. They can also enter to win tickets and other prizes. So make sure they uh, make sure fans look out for social media accounts for Turn Up and Teal events. Awesome, nice. So um, how can fans really start getting engaged? Because we're we're getting to the point where we're at playoffs. We're not quite there yet. So prior to playoffs actually starting, how can they start getting amped up and pumped for it? Yeah. So I think a couple things. Uh, I think one merchandise. I, I think fans have probably seen. We've tried to put a huge effort into increasing the variety, the quality, right. um, what we have in the shark store, you know, what we have online. And we've actually made playoffs even a bigger priority. We're, we're really, really hard on this in, in terms of creating a variety. So not only will you see, you know, a, a ton of SKUs in the shark store with the, with the generic playoff mode, mm -hmm. but you're actually starting uh, tonight, you'll see a variety of these player related t-shirts. Uh, so showing off obviously the personality of the players with that neon theme. We got a Burnsy. Wonderful. You know we have uh, a, P a Pavelski here. Again, we think these are going to be really popular. <laughs> We're going to work that, uh, this personality also yeah. into the game elements in all of our marketing. That's wonderful. That's the one Jumbo was making fun of, right? Yeah. <laughs> the well, other way around, but yeah. And then a, and then a Carlson. Oh, nice. 
Those are really, really sharp. Yeah, one for each all-star. That's awesome. No, I love these. And you know what? The other thing I want to say real quick, it's not just that it looks great, but much like the shirts that we're selling, yeah. these <laughs> are ridiculously soft. Yeah. Like really very nice material. Um, yeah, just it's going to feel great. So. And then one other thing we've heard, which again, we've worked very hard on, oh, you know, okay. women's. Women's cuts, women's sizes, women <laughs> variety. I mean, we've, we've made, you know, women's merchandise something that's right. very important because we have, you know, a, a lot of female fans that are just as passionate and yeah. they deserve to have the, the right merchandise. And, and you have uh, your own whole kiosk now that's just Correct. all women's. The, yeah. the women's, the women's walk-in shop, yeah. which we've, we've actually seen record numbers in that shop. So that, that we've had good feedback. At, we're, we're, not, we're not there yet. There's still some work to do in terms of creating the variety sure. uh, and, and, and the sizing, but, but we've made a lot of progress and I think the, the female Sharks fans have spent. Fantastic. We do have a lot of female viewers on our show as well. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Maybe one other thing oh, that sure. fans can do now, just because uh, you know we mentioned the, the neon, uh, the ne actually the neon lights we made. Uh, we're, so we're doing that again, but we're letting fans get involved this year. So instead of having them go to Sharks bars, we're actually having a sweepstakes where fans can win one of those neon lights. Uh, we're going to have nine specially made, each one with a different player. And the twist this year is that there'll be a, uh, an on-off switch for the player and an off switch for playoff mode. <laughs> okay. So it's something that can be used all year round. So fans can go to sjsharks.com slash sweeps to enter to win one of those neon lights. Nice. nice. And we'll put that up on our show right down there. Right down there. <laughs> Um, so going into the playoffs now, so let's start with the home games. Mm -hmm. What are we going to expect? We've, we've seen in the past, we've done the light up wristbands, we've done rally towels. Uh, what do you guys have up your sleeve that you could disclose, I guess? Uh, you know, I, I think we tried a lot of different things last year uh, that were pretty well received by fans. So I think some of those are going to come back. Uh, and I think there's uh, the idea of, you know, bringing more of the community to the viewing events. Um, but in terms of home game days, uh, it'll start with the street rallies out on Autumn Street, um, which would be every home game. We'll have a street rally starting two and a half hours before puck drop. Uh, there'll be obviously the favorites like the Sharks Foundation beer booth. Uh, we'll have entertainment. We'll have all the freebies from sponsors. And I think there's going to be a couple other surprises and twists just to make it a little more interesting this year. Uh, coming into the street rally, we'll continue in the playoff mode march. So getting, uh, getting fans who want to march from San Pedro Square Market all the way down to, uh, to SAP Center and then meet at the street rally where there'll be a big celebration before doors open. That will continue. We, uh, we got up into the seven, 800 person um, oh, no. marches last year. I wow. think we're trying to get over 1,000. And yeah. if you saw that last year, it's pretty amazing to see that, <laughs> that wave of teal led yeah. by uh, Sharky and John Root yeah. come down and, and you get people honking. And we have the drum corps that gives it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more atmosphere. And yeah. really, you know, yeah. even for me, I just kind of walk to see what's going on. And yeah, I have goosebumps yeah. and I'm, I'm ready to get out there yeah. on the ice. So it <laughs> starts raising up. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, that's playoff mode. It's yeah. great. <laughs> um, so that will continue. So fans, again, can look out for that. Uh, SJSharks.com slash playoffs. Right now, it's really about the ticket information. But as we have our opponent and the game date secured, we're going to start rolling out all this information about the street rallies, about the march, and everything that's going on in a, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, it's also a good opportunity uh, to talk about the Sharks Plus SAP Center app which actually during the playoffs, we send a daily push notification with an entire schedule of how you can get involved. So if you're not yet using the app, that's, uh, that's a good, good way to get uh, advanced uh, notice of what we're doing good. on, on playoff game days. Nice. Uh, in terms of uh, the actual game, so giveaways. Uh, oh, we're going off screen again. Burns <laughs> yet. So uh, every game will have a rally towel, and the rally towel will match the playoff mode theme. So each game will have a different player um, featured on the rally towel. So, so we've got the opportunity to not just have the playoff mode rally towel here yeah. with, the, with the box, but also as the games are going on, you're going to be giving these ones out. They're pretty much the same, but they have the, the different player. players the on players, there. The players, yeah. That's so every, every yeah. fan in attendance at, at each home playoff game will get a different playoff towel. Every playoff towel will have a different player. So we use the black theme, which is something Love new. Yeah. The back will be white. So again, we don't lose that, 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 uh, that, when you're that feeling of when we're waving yeah, the towels, yeah, yeah. when we're either, you know, again, on the ice or after we score. So mm -hmm. whether it's dark, light, you'll see the, see the towel. Uh, in addition, uh, everyone will get a commemorative ticket. So we know with, with mobile ticketing, there's yeah. maybe a loss of that memorabilia right. item. So we're bringing yeah. back the commemorative ticket so someone has something that they can take home. That's great. Uh, right. Then we'll have the uh, LED wristbands yep. that we've had. Uh, I think we have some new choreography up our sleeves, which will make that, uh, I think, a little bit of a cooler experience, yeah. in addition to the projection 
um, that we'll have in round one. I think going forward as we advance rounds, we'll have some different surprises with event presentation, nice. but we'll have that same show to get everyone here early in their seats, pumped up yeah. For, yeah. for the guys coming out of the ice. So Yeah, no, uh, that's great. And, and I've been here with uh, you know some of the on-ice presentations yeah. just for this season alone, not even counting playoffs, obviously, because we're not there yet. But for the regular season, we've seen some really cool stuff with done with the lighting. So, I mean, there's a lot to look forward to with what the presentation on the ice is going to look like for you know, such a momentous occasion here doing playoffs. Absolutely, and I'm glad you mentioned those lights because that, that gives us a lot more flexibility to do things not just in the opening show. Mm -hmm. So you'll actually see kind of a show within a show during intermission. Ah, okay. Um, so I, I, again, I, I think I want to have that be something that people are, are, are kind of learning about as okay. it happens. But, <laughs> sure. but it's, it's something where, you know, if you don't really know what to do at intermission, if you've kind of done what you need to do, get back in your seats and you're going to have really another show to get you excited, get the fans pumped in the seats and ready to get wow. the team going as soon as they step on the ice after That's intermission. Yeah. yeah. So is that now, is that everything with the home stuff or? Do you, want, do you have anything else you want to talk about with the, the, the home game? Yeah, so I think I think one other thing, uh, okay. you know, an, an area that we've made a priority this year has been food and beverage. Okay. Uh, so we'll have some new food and beverage items yeah, specifically great. for the playoffs. Uh, we'll have uh, a new signature drink uh, using Milagro tequila. Uh, we'll actually take the, uh, the hockey helmet, which I think you may have seen <laughs> the hockey helmet nachos. Yes, yes. And yeah. actually uh, throw fried chicken and tater tots in there. Nice. For, so for the crowd that's maybe not on the diet, <laughs> yeah, okay. that, 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 that's there. But Joe's very happy over there in the corner. <laughs> yeah. we'll, 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 have some, we'll have some items that are actually uh, representative of our opponent. Um, uh -huh. So I, I don't, I don't want to give the whole menu because right. that'll yeah. be coming yeah, out fine. actually right. at a later date. But we'll have a lot of new. Uh, food options. So again, uh, another, another way to increase the ex experience when you're coming to home games. Very good. Right. Okay. Um, so we've talked a little bit about the home games now, um, but for the fan that can't make it out to it and they want to experience something similar or something fun and the, the, the sharks are away, right? So what, what do you have in store for the away experience for fans? Yeah. So, so the, the, sh the short answer is we're going to have uh, an official sharks viewing party at every game. Okay. Um, you know, we, we did that last for last year's playoffs for the first time having every game. Um, this this year, I, th I think we've you know we've we've learned a lot that Sharks fans want that community, and that community necessarily shouldn't be limited to a bar that holds 200 people, 300 right. people. Yeah. We want we want to provide a platform where thousands of Sharks fans can meet, feel that environment. Uh, so, so there's a couple things we're doing. One, I don't know if you noticed, two weeks ago we actually did a viewing party at Avaya Stadium. Yes. We had about a thousand people there for a Thursday night uh, March game, um, so so we're going to work on uh, viewing parties at, at Avaya potentially, potentially out on Autumn Street, potentially in Arena Green. Again, once we have the date set, we're going to be able to release this. But we're looking at having official viewing parties that are thousands of Sharks fans that we we can then bring that environment with Danny Miller, with the sound effects, with the, with the tank patrol, so you really feel like you're at a game away from the tank. It's amazing. <laughs> um, we're also, you know, we, we understand that if, if there's a viewing party in San Jose, that, that may be hard for everyone to get to. So we're very close to uh, officially announcing a official Sharks uh, viewing network okay. where we're going to have a series of bars that actually fans have submitted across the whole geography of the Bay Area where we'll send them kits that include giveaways, that include coasters, posters, nice. you know, music. <laughs> where they can really fill that Sharks environment if they can't make it down to the official viewing party. So again, it's all about creating yeah. these, these platforms where fans can just express their Sharks fandom, yeah. be in playoff mode, feel the community aspect, and, and really just cre cre create that energy around the entire Bay Area, around the team in the playoffs. So, so what's going on in the community in general then? Yeah, so I, th I think we try to help the community get excited about the playoffs and get everyone in playoff mode. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's some things that we're doing personally, and there's some things that we can help uh, community activate. Uh, the, the first is, you know, the, the teal houses yeah. of Sharks territory uh, came back this year. We have another five houses that we're actually painting starting the first week of the playoffs. Nice. So you'll see that. They're really the people who are bleeding teal and, yeah. and uh, <laughs> really Sharks for life. Yeah. Uh, you know, they'll be able to show that, and that gets people in the communities talking. Um, we'll actually, you'll see about 2,000 of the uh, playoff mode uh, decals for businesses that we'll actually use our street team to start distributing all over the Bay Area starting, uh, starting next week. Uh, you know, we, we actually have a lot of businesses that contact us, whether it be putting up a Sharks Territory banner, whether it's just having some collateral for their, 
for their shop. So, uh, you know, we, we already have an entire list of businesses that we work with on a regular basis all over the Bay Area. All but I'd encourage, I'd encourage <laughs> any other business that's interested to reach out to the Sharks um, and, uh, and our marketing department can help them do get in playoff mode. Do you know how they would be able to reach out to, to you guys? Like, is there, is there a link or is there something maybe we could put on the screen so that other businesses that are potentially watching would, would know? Yeah, so if, if you go to SJ Sharks and go to, go to the contact us, that'd okay. be one way. Um, I can give you a, a specific email address Perfect. for the, uh, yeah, the he's lower third He's here. got it down too. Yeah. <laughs> <He's> got it. <laughs> Later in the show. Um, but, but yeah, we, we encourage everyone to, if they want to get in playoff mode, we yeah. want to help you get in playoff mode. Love so it. if businesses are out there and want to do that, we definitely are open to, uh, to working with everyone. Very good. Well, I think uh, you certainly helped us uh, get into playoff mode with yeah. all the things that we just heard. I'm excited. I know you're I'm excited. Stoked, yeah. So um, yeah, gosh, I can't wait. This is going to be great. Okay, so you guys get ready for playoff mode. Get those uh, bits of swag that he just showed us. There's a lot of really cool stuff in there. There's One of the lot. things he didn't show us was the socks. If we can get the socks real fast, oh. give me these socks. Because, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> rocking those. So anyway, uh, again, Doug, thank you so much thank you for guys. coming and talking with us. And and thank you for your support. Of yeah, absolutely, anytime. Letting everybody know what you guys are doing. Uh, we're, we're just really stoked. We can't wait. So thanks That's again. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Go Sharks. Yeah, go Sharks. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.